Hey, what's shaking guys? Wanted to do a video today on the new DeWalt compact router, the cordless version. Um, as you can see here, I've got five of them and they've been a game changer for me. I've really enjoyed integrating them into my workflow and wanted to do a tool review as well as talk about some of the router bits that I'm using that really help me take my work to the next level. Some of these bits you've probably never seen before. So I hope you find the review helpful as well as uh, the tips and tricks regarding these different router bits. So let's get right into the tool review now. I've been using the uh, compact cordless router for a couple months now. I had them pre-ordered. Um, as soon as I heard about the release of these, I knew I wanted them. Uh, so up to this point, I've got five in my collection and that'll probably continue to grow. It's super nice being able to cut the cord on a router. Um, so as far as the review goes, I see a lot of guys using these for things they probably shouldn't be. Um, I think it's important to remember it is a compact router. It's not a full tilt, uh, full size router. So using it uh, for framing to hog out OSB, for window openings and stuff like that. You might be able to do it, but it's really not what the router's meant for. So just keep that in mind. Don't expect more than what it was designed to do. For me personally, I'm running small bits most of the time in these. So as far as power goes, it's been everything that I need it to be. The brushless technology is giving great run times. I pretty much always have five amp hour batteries on all my tools and I'm getting plenty of life out of them. I'm very satisfied with that. So aside from having uh, plenty sufficient power, a couple of other things I really like, probably one of my favorite things is the base plate on this router. It actually really helps having this square side offset. It gives you something to grab a hold of and really helps a lot with balancing the tool. I wasn't sure what I was gonna think uh, of the weight balance. I was afraid it was gonna be really top heavy and awkward. It's actually not too bad. Um, if you're routing something flat, you really don't notice the top weight. One of my favorite things about it is that with the battery on it, you can set it down and it's really well balanced. It's not gonna fall over. And you can also set it down without the battery on it as well. But this is pretty standard for changing bits. You can just pop the base off, uh, throw a wrench on it. It's got a button here that locks the chuck. Really easy to change out bits. So that's not too big a deal. The other big issue uh, with these small compact routers that I've had, I've tried a lot of different compact routers, is will the base creep and move over time as it gets maybe set down a little bit harder, whatever. It can ruin a workpiece if your base moves and, and the bit goes too deep or something. So far I've been using this and it's been great. I haven't had any trouble with having to readjust uh, my setting for the bit depth. It stays right where it's supposed to be. So I'm very happy with that on these routers. The tool does come with a uh, LED light, which is nice. The switch is located on the side, not super easy to turn on on accident. It is, does take some getting used to to remember which side of the tool to turn it off with, but not a big deal. So last week I was doing some built-ins here in the shop and I took some video uh, having in mind that I was gonna be doing this video uh, on the compact router. So I'll show you some of the different uses that I use these compact routers for and my favorite bits. Uh, these bits are gonna stay chucked in these routers pretty much all the time. I don't like changing bits and I use mostly all the same bits all the time. So having a handful of dedicated routers makes a lot more sense to me than having one router and interchanging five different bits all the time. So starting off, I've got these two routers here. They both have the exact same bit in them. It's a 532nd roundover bit. One of these routers is always on the job site and one of them is always in the shop. My millwork company sends most of their trim with a 532nd radius on a lot of their different casing profiles and whatnot. So I find that using this bit to match that looks really nice. You might think it's kind of an unusual bit, you know, 
being right between an eighth inch and three sixteenths, does it really make that much difference? And I actually think it really does. I like the look of a 532nd bit. An eighth just isn't quite enough and three sixteenth is too much. So I use these bits constantly, uh, especially on the job site. So these are dedicated routers with dedicated bits that stay chucked with that all the time. Okay, so then moving over here, I've got a 1 16th pilot bearing bit set up in this router. And this is something that I standardize for all of my face frames. It really takes your face frame and built-in game to the next level versus using a really sharp square edge, uh, which isn't gonna take paint very well. It's gonna be very prone to damage. Um, this 1 16th radius works really well. Here you can see a close up of the radius edge. That's a 1 16th radius versus a crisp square edge over here. I hit all my face frames with this bit. It's got a pilot bearing on it, which is a lot different than your typical bit, which has a large bearing. What this pilot bit allows you to do is get into the corners on your face frames really well. As long as you keep the bit moving, it doesn't burn. The next bit that you see right here is a flush trimming bit. And it's a very unique flush trimming bit. It's not a, it's a spiral bit, but it's not an up spiral or a down spiral. It's actually both. And what that does is it makes so that as that bit's spinning, it actually pulls the grain in both directions at the same time so that you don't get tear out on one side of your, of your uh, piece that you're flush trimming. So I'm really, really happy with this setup on this router. I've got some footage using that on some built tins and uh, it, it's just been great. I'm really excited about this bit. I actually used to just use standard um, spiral bits and they're act they actually work incredible. I love spiral bits uh, versus a straight flush trimming bit. Um, but this bit is just a beautiful bit. So let's talk flush trimming bits here for a second. You can see here, I like my flush trimming bits. I've got quarter inch shank here, half inch shank here, and these are all different. Some of these are up cut spiral bits, some are down cut spiral bits, and some are combination spiral bits. What I've got in this router right here, if I can get it to focus, this is actually a quarter inch uh, spiral combination bit. So it's actually up cut and down cut at the same time. Uh, that means you're not gonna get tear out on either side as it cuts through uh, the flush trimming process. A Little bit bigger bit right here. This is also a, uh, if I can get my camera to focus, this is also a flush trimming bit and it's a half inch shank. So you can see, if I can get it to focus, uh, how the flutes actually change direction midway. Here they're going one direction, here they're going another direction. What that means is that as the bit spins, it's actually pulling the grain in from both directions. It means you're not gonna get tear out on either side. These are really fantastic bits. Um, all these bits are pretty much white side bits. Uh, it's all I buy anymore. I think they're great bits. Uh, the other bit that I use a ton whenever I've really got a high-end piece that I need to flush trim is this bit. Uh, it's also a white side combination bit. It's a spiral bit up cut and down cut at the same time. And the extra wide radius on this means you're going to get less chance of a piece splintering off and tearing out. So this is a really fantastic bit. And this is the router setup that I use whenever I really need things to go well. So all of that being said um, about flush trimming bits, the, the compact router is never gonna be able to do what this really large half inch shank bit is gonna be able to do on a corded router. I think that larger, you know, cordless routers are obviously coming, but they're not here yet. However, for light flush trimming, you really can't beat this setup with the plunge base. Uh, it's got great balance and um, 
and you don't have a cord to trip over. So I think that's awesome. This bit is gonna stay set up like this in my shop all the time. Uh, like I said, I, I do a ton of built-ins where I have to have the sides flush, and this is gonna work great for that. Real quick, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this, but since we're talking about flush trimming, this is the router that I use more than any other router. Dedicated flush trimming router. I do a ton of shelving with a one by two nosing as well as my countertops for all my built-ins are three-quarter plywood with a one by two nosing and to flush trim those applications this router setup would not work well because you would have to run it like this and you would have that wobble effect going on but this router is the Festool OF1010 set up with a spiral bit, a uh, quarter inch spiral bit with a bearing as a lipping planer. It's set up as a lipping planer. So you can have your, your piece flat and, and still run this across and flush trim it and you've got all this support up here. So I use this a ton. It's a great setup for flush trimming. These two routers, uh, the Festool 1010 set up as a lipping planer and the new DeWalt compact router uh, will be good for vertical applications. It's a perfect duo, in my opinion, for, for flush trimming. So I don't think it gets any better than these two routers, you know, being able to use them in their different orientations. Uh, this is gonna work great for me. So the last router bit I'm gonna cover in this video is a bit that almost no one has ever seen before and it's called a Collins ply prep bit. It's not a super well-known bit, but whenever you do a lot of shelving uh, and you need to put a lot of nosing on, this bit hollows the front edge of your plywood. It creates a concave uh, indentation, and what that does is allows your nosing to be clamped super tight, and it's gonna prevent the moisture inside the glue from expanding that plywood and pushing your piece of hardwood nosing out which is then gonna create an unsightly line. So for all of my edge banding with one by two nosing, I use this bit to hit the plywood beforehand. So typically I would use this on my boom arm uh, for my, my Festool setup that swings over this table here, but sometimes my work pieces get really big and it's a pain to have to try to take this router around the work table and whatnot with a hose and a cord. So. My thinking was that I could set up the new uh, DeWalt compact router with the same bit and that way I could just take this around the work table wherever I needed to go. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how well it's gonna work. I think for, for the vast majority, I'm still gonna be using a corded um, router, but this I think will still be nice to be able to take it away from the workbench if I need to maybe to take it to the job site and leave it set up as a dedicated router. Um, I bought the DeWalt fence for it. It's okay, not great. Nothing uh, in comparison to the custom setup that I, I put on this router myself. So again, uh, compact routers are great, but they do have their limitations still. So I hope you guys found the video helpful. I give the, the new DeWalt compact router a 10 out of 10. I think it does everything that it, uh, I've been needing it to do and I'm really happy they waited to get it right before releasing the tool. Um, fantastic tool. Uh, if you've got any questions, comment below. I'll try to answer any questions. Let me know what you guys, what your experience has been with these routers. I've had nothing but success with them. And I think if you realize the limitations of what the router is actually meant for, you'll be really happy with it if you purchase it. So links will be below for the different bits and tool setups that I've mentioned here. This is, uh, these are the most common routers that I use. So hopefully you found the video helpful and informative. Uh, again, let me know if you've got any questions. Give me a thumbs up to help, uh, help the video get some steam. And don't forget to subscribe uh, for more content like this. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.